Episode of 1923 Main Street. Home of the Disney Travel Podcast with the latest Disney Travel news. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bello Braddock. And I'm Amelia Bello Braddock. And today, more and more restaurants are reopening at Walt Disney World and Avengers Campus at Disneyland has some new additions. Yes, it's, you know, it's hard to believe that uh, not all the restaurants are still open. Honestly, like I, everything else is so done from COVID, it's hard to fathom that there are still repercussions from it yeah and also not all of the character greetings in fact they're taking some away i heard because they can't hire people right that surprised me but the good news is a couple of these reopenings there are three of them we're going to talk about and they're all pretty popular i don't necessarily love them all but we'll get into that uh two of the three are character dining experiences so that's good news if you are heading down anytime starting pretty much around november 1st so Let's start with the first one, starting November 1st. Tusker House will reopen, and this is back to its original all-you-care-to-enjoy buffet style for breakfast, and they will have usual things like zebra coffee cake and Simba waffles, Mickey waffles, and usual breakfast treats at Disney World. Yeah, then for lunch and dinner, they have like breads and dips and spit-roasted tandoori chicken and green curry shrimp, and of course, now they have plant-based offerings yes of course because disney is very inclusive that way they have a cauliflower bunny chow that's funny <laughs> cauliflower bunny chow get it because it's animal kingdom and Tuscan. oh yep i definitely picked <laughs> up on that and other various salads <laughs> yeah and for the kids characters will be back as donald duck and friends will be taking a break from their safari adventures so they'll be in their safari get-ups at this restaurant and kids food as well corn dog nuggets macaroni and cheese and as always Plenty of desserts. Now, Tusker House, we like Tusker House for breakfast. Yeah. I do like Donald and Daisy and that. That's what who was there. And I think Goofy and their safari gear. So it's sort of fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit different. You don't really get those ones as often at Character Dining. So that's fun. Yeah, so it's a that one is a thumbs up from me. You too? Yeah. Yeah, we have not done lunch or dinner there, really. When we do Tusker House, it's a breakfast. So we'll sort of try to book as early as possible for Animal Kingdom and then get into the park right after that. All right, next up at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, Kona Cafe will also be reopening on November 1st. Yeah, this one's a bit interesting. Because they refurbished it. Yeah, new look. And so they've also added some new food to the menu. So that will be a little bit different. And they just have... American cuisine, but with a little bit of an Asian touch to it. And you can still watch the chefs work on stage in the sushi kitchen and stuff like that. Yeah, so they have not removed. The first question is going to be, do they still have Tonga toast? Yes. The breakfast still has Tonga toast and the pineapple macadamia nut pancakes. The longtime favorites, really. Those have been around for quite a while, so they'll still be there. But there are new menu items. Yep, they have added the Big Kahuna Burger and Seafood Poo Platter. And a new plant-based offering, obviously, the sautéed red quinoa. Yeah, so Kona, I like Kona Cafe, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it sounds to me like they're... Especially since they've updated it. Yeah, and I also think from the sounds of this, reading between the lines, they are making the menu a little bit more sort of Americanized offerings because it was a little bit unique. So in other words... Yeah. Not always for everyone. Sort of like Skipper Canteen, really. A lot of people you know. are very basic in yeah, this scene. Yeah, people. I mean, myself included. We were in yeah, France. A lot of like, Disney travelers are very basic <laughs> eaters. We were in France. I was like, so does anyone have like a cheeseburger? I could just, I'll just take one of those. Please. You know, on a complete tangent, I'll go on. I've seen a couple of things in chat rooms recently, twice in the last week that I can identify. People saying... Why are there no super spicy foods anywhere? One of them was about chicken Good wings. Good point, actually. Yeah, and one of them was about something else. And now I love, as Amelia will know, and <laughs> can confirm the kind of heat that burns your mouth off. Like the even the extremist at most places is not hot enough. So I'm, I love extreme. I'm getting there. I'm, we're working up for me. And eventually, by the time Disney gets some, I will be there. Yeah, now they don't have to go that far. But really, they don't have anything that's what I would call really hot. 
in anywhere. So yeah, but your especially wings or things like that, which your is your radar is not accurate. But even normal hot, like something that to me would feel mild that would just spice up my mouth. So yeah, it's yeah. interesting. They, they are could, lacking that a little. They bit. could use to uh, spice up their cooking a little bit more. There might be one or two dishes, but there's certainly not enough. And you know, a good chicken wing place, to be honest, there really isn't one. There's chicken wings at some places. I'm sure eventually Disney Springs will open up one of those. Yeah, I know. So interesting. Just a little tangent there. Yes. And now the third uh, and second of the three that has characters. Not one of my favorites, but this is interesting because this is probably the most misunderstood and mispronounced restaurant name in all of Walt Disney World. This is the Princess Dining at Norway and Epcot. Do you know how to say it properly? Not I told even, you once. Yeah, but I'm not even going to try. So a lot of people will say Akershus. A lot of people will say Akershus. Akershus. Oh, that's very close. The proper... Here it is. Tell your friends or quiz your friends. The proper way that the cast members who work there, if you ask them, and true Norwegians, will tell you is Akershus. So it is Akershus Royal Banquet Hall. Oh, not Akershus, not Akershus, but Akershus is the name. And it is reopening. The others are November 1st, but this one is November 4th in the Norway Pavilion at Epcot. Now, yes. here's another one that I think they're changing up. Our knock against this, first of all, hate to say it, but the... Princess quality there was sort of second tier to Cinderella's royal table. Well, maybe now that they've closed down some other character spots, they'll have higher quality princesses available. Yes, Cinderella's royal table still, as we record this, they may announce something this week, does not have princesses back. It is open, but there are no princesses. So this will reopen with princesses on November 4th. So that's good. But the other, th The other thing I didn't like about it was... I like experimental food, or not experimental, but different unique foods that we were just talking about. But yeah. in the past, it's been a little bit too Norwegian, right, for some taste. Not yes. so bad for me, but I know friends who didn't like it for that reason. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they're uh, fixing it up a bit. So let's yes. talk about it. This is family style. Yeah. So, But they do still have classic Norwegian dishes, including like some meatballs and a Norwegian version of chicken and dumplings. But now they'll also offer classic... American food with mashed potatoes and gravy, salmon, macaroni and cheese, things like that. And then desserts with rice cake. Yeah, desserts are still their unique yeah, ones. Desserts are a little bit out there, but I like I can still see enjoying this. Rice cream with strawberry sauce. That's and, rice cream, not ice cream. Yes, rice cream. <laughs> and then a potato roulade with lingo. Lingonberries, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm not Norwegian. So their desserts tell. I'm sure their their desserts will appeal to all, but yeah, it sounds like they balanced the menu a bit. So this is a good thing. You know, any restaurants reopening, especially these popular ones, is good. And especially a princess one because it's lacking mm -hmm. right now, especially with Royal Table. Yes. So maybe this is a sign that something's coming there. I don't know. Yeah. We will hopefully we'll see because we were going to go there when we go at Christmas. But mm -hmm. I don't want I mean, we go there a lot. So I don't want to eat there as just a restaurant <laughs> right now. So I will, hopefully something will come back. But those are three great ones coming yeah. back. Tusker House, Akershus, and Kona Cafe. And yes, also the princesses are back for storybook dining. Yes, the princesses are back. So that's always fun. But, you know, my big point is if Disney is low on princesses, I have the fix for them. Hire me. I'm available. If Disney wants to contact me, I'm right here. And which princess would you fit the bill for? Um, I would take any of them, to be honest. Any of them Disney offered me. I'd like to think of myself as a punzi. As a punzi? But all that's right. not accurate at all. So <laughs> she's just my favorite. So I'm being biased. So. And now we're still waiting Disney as far as dining up. goes. I want Takumi Te to reopen, please. <laughs> I love Takumi Te in the Japan Pavilion at I kind of just figured it would never reopen. We only got there once after it opened. Then COVID hit and now it still hasn't reopened. But it's an exceptional restaurant. Super fine dining. Maybe my palate has evolved since we were there. Yeah, it's great. So anyway, three good ones. Always good to see more restaurants reopening just in time for the holidays. You can book them all right now. So get on and book if you are looking to because they'll probably fill up fast. Has been a while. And now over at Disneyland, of course, Wakanda Forever, Black Panther Part 2 is coming out. And they're doing a little celebration at Disneyland at the Avenger Campus and at Downtown Disney. So yes. in the movie, what's going on in the movie? 
in the movie, the leaders of Wakanda fight to like protect their nation because other world powers are trying to take over it after T'Challa's death. And as the Wakandans, they fight to embrace their next chapter and the heroes have to make a new path towards their kingdom because they're still reeling from T'Challa's death. Yeah, so to celebrate this, and I like how they're doing this, from November 11th, through January 8th. Yeah, this is when it is. It's. It, I think the movie opens on that day. So you'll encounter and learn about and celebrate the arrival of the new warriors. And I like, there's a food component. Yeah, they have Wakanda-inspired delicacies. Yeah. But Wakanda's not a real place. Oh, yes, it is. So, How can you say that? Wait till the new park opens. I not don't, that they've officially announced that, but... <laughs> I don't know what they... I well, don't know there's what... a good one. There's a peri peri chicken, so like a roast chicken. So they've they've created several dishes that are and a drink that are Wakanda inspired. So definitely yeah. tryable. So we'll have to see. And of course, they'll have props for the film and stuff on the Avengers campus. And of course, they have a sort of posable, fo- you know, photo area in downtown Disney. Will be part of that, so you can get your Wakanda Forever photos. And visit the Avengers campus to witness the introduction of the next warrior who will be taking on the legendary mantle of the Black Panther. They're being very vague as the movie is not out yet. So like some of these things at the uh, Wakanda Marketplace and Hollywood Backlot, you can try, like I said, they're traditional African inspired dishes, right? So they have the sort of culture of Wakanda. And there's, like I said, the peri peri chicken with yellow jollof rice, butterfly pea tea lemonade. And a dawa beverage consisting of vodka, lemonade, honey, ginger beer, and butterfly pea tea. Yeah, that sounds just, good. Yeah, if you take out the vodka and you make it ginger ale, sounds delicious. The mafe is interesting. Yes, yeah, so this is a ground peanut stew with sweet potatoes, tomatoes, black-eyed peas, and spices, and it is also served with naan. So, isn't that weird? A ground peanut stew with so, sweet potatoes. To, I don't know. So I, I think would actually, you're, you're going like to get try this. That. And I will take your non bread. <laughs> That's how we're going to enjoy this meal. And then if you want something a little bit more traditional, but still sort of Wakanda inspired, head to the Shwarma Palace inside Avengers Campus. And, and they have what there? They just have very basic Wakanda roasted pork wrap, which is just Eve and spiced pork with black garlic sauce and charmoula. So maybe that'll be spicy I was for you. Say, how spicy is this going to be? Yeah. I will say. Flavors at uh, Disneyland are a bit more bold. All right, so we'll see. And maybe that's just because of the culture, especially with the sort of Mexico Latin influence, a bit more spicy out there. They they even have tahini with their fruit originally, and you know before Disney World ever did anything like that. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Celebrating Wakanda over at Disneyland, and then finally. The last news of this week: Adventures by Disney is to debut its first ever. Adriatic Sea Expedition in 2024. So, of Croatian descent, am I? Yes. I could sail by Croatia. There's lots of, uh, yeah, sailing along the Adriatic, which is between Croatia and Italy, essentially, and Mm. other countries touched upon there. This new one is the Adriatic Sea. What is, where is? The Adriatic is between Croatia and Italy. Ooh. Yeah, it's right between. So, when you visit, when you're on the coast in Dubrovnik and Split and all those uh, Croatian cities that are very picturesque. That's the Adriatic. Uh, so, you know, you will get lots of great views and all that sort of stuff. It's an eight-day, seven-night round trip. It sails out of Venezia, out of Venice, Italy, it's actually... with seven ports in Croatia and Montenegro Ooh, well, before returning back to Venice. Well, it's coming up quite soon. 2024 seems far away, but 2022 is over in two months. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and there's only two <laughs> sailings, so if you want to... Do that, then definitely. Oh, book yeah. now. This one is not a hundred thousand yeah, dollars a person. Yeah, this is not so the around the world tour. So it's check a little into bit more that. realistic. All right, everyone. That is the news for this week. Thanks for listening. You now know how to pronounce Akershus if you did not before. So that's a good one to use to your Disney friends if you want to put them on the spot and they don't know that because odds are most people are going to get that wrong. And thank you for listening. As always, follow along at nineteen twenty three Main Street on social media. Have a magical day, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.